Hi, this is Elliot Fisherman, and welcome to the April 2023 CTSS quiz. I hope that uh, you're doing well. It's April, which means we're getting close to spring, or in spring. So let's bring ahead with 10 cases. It's a range of different topics, and I hope you like them. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with right lower quadrant pain is, this is a classic case, right? You look at the right lower quadrant, there's a dilated appendix, and there's a calcification present. There's some stranding around the appendix. No, this is not Crohn's disease. And no, I do not see evidence of a small bowel obstruction. And this is not ileitis. This is a classic case of acute appendicitis with appendolith. Again, does this patient need surgery? Likely they will get surgery and more and more. Sometimes they're treating patients with antibiotics and see how well they recover, particularly the inflammation is relatively minor. It's a good example of the importance of IV contrast, enhancing the appendix and giving the area around the appendix a very good look. But this was acute appendicitis, a really classic case. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, on the axial images, the most impressive thing to me is the calcification in the spleen. The spleen is small, and this is best described as autoinfarction. You can get autoinfarction in a patient with um, O prior trauma in theory, though usually it's just a small spleen with some rim enhancement or even a bigger spleen with calcification. Uh, we used to see dense spleens in patients who receive thoracrest. We don't see that anymore. Uh, then you look at the sagittal views, the spine. You have the classic fish mouth vertebral body. No, it's not thalassemia, and thalassemia gives you a big spleen. It's not lymphoma. You can get calcifications in spleen and lymphoma that's been treated, but not a small, densely a calcified spleen, and myelofibrosis typically have a large spleen. Between looking at the patient's spleen and looking at the spine, a classic example of SS disease, sickle cell disease. The most likely diagnosis of the right adrenal mass is, well, if we look only at the coronal view, we see about a five or six centimeter adrenal mass. It's solid with central necrosis. You go through a differential that includes a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. Pheos are not very likely because there's no vascularity in the lesion. It doesn't have the look of an adenoma, but you would go through a differential including metastasis. Then you look at the liver. The liver is cirrhotic. There's ascites and there's a mass in the right lobe of the liver. The spleen is enlarged. So now we're dealing with what I believe is a hepatoma or findings highly concerning for hepatoma. So now when you think of the adrenal, it's not going to be an adenoma. It doesn't have the vascularity of a pheo, though we, as we said, pheos are not always hypervascular. It could be a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma, but then how am I tying in the liver? In this case, this was hepatoma, and the hepatoma metastasized to the right adrenal. I've mentioned this before, but hepatoma going to adrenal usually is bilateral, and usually the masses are large, and this is just a really good example of a large metastasis from hepatoma to the adrenal. The least likely diagnosis of this pancreatic mass is, well, let's look at the mass, let's describe it. There's a cystic lesion with septations and calcification. There's no dilated common duct, and there's no dilated pancreatic duct. So what are we dealing with? MCN is a good thought based on location. MCN can have calcification, but typically it has thin septations, if septations at all. IPMN occasionally has calcifications. You can get septations and nodularity. That's when you worry about malignancy, but you would expect to see a dilated pancreatic duct. Adenocarcinoma is just too cystic. There's no dilated pancreatic duct. This calcification is not an adenocarcinoma. The most likely diagnosis, septations, calcification, is a serous cyst adenoma, which this indeed was. But the least likely diagnosis, which is what I'm asking you, is a pancreatic adenocarcinoma. 
This is not a pancreatic adenocarcinoma. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, we see a mass that infiltrates the region of the pancreas or arises from the pancreas. And in cases, the celiac and on the coronal view, which is more venous, and in cases, the portal vein, SMV, and really comes down into the mesentery. So what are we dealing with here? Pancreatic adenocarcinoma is a possibility, but such a big mass, I would be seeing dilated pancreatic duct and common duct, and usually it doesn't infiltrate into the kidney. Carcinoid tumors are usually vascular. In the mesentery, you see a process, but this is just too much for carcinoid. Duanal adenocarcinoma, again, it's a possibility, but here it would have to be invading through the pancreas and everywhere. It's just too much. The right answer for this case is B-cell lymphoma. Lymphoma can infiltrate the pancreas, infiltrate the nodes, infiltrate the mesentery, and be very large. And this was a good example of B-cell lymphoma. The least likely diagnosis in this case is, well, what am I looking at? A large paratracheal mass infiltrating the anterior metastinum and narrowing the patient's SVC. The coronal view, you can see the infiltration. Okay, this, if you look at, to me, you can think about lung cancer like small cell. I'm thinking about lymphoma. And in fact, this was a mantle cell lymphoma. Small cell lung cancer is a definite possibility. I don't see a mass, but I'm not showing you all the lung windows. And thymoma is also a possibility. It's a bit much, but in terms of the middle mediastinum, but Thymomas can grow downward. They can extend anywhere. They encase the SVC. Sarcoidosis gives you nodes, but not this big conglomerate mass. It could compress the SVC, but not invading the SVC. The least likely diagnosis in this case is going to be sarcoidosis. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, from the axials and from the 3D cinematic rendering, we see a periodic right-sided mass that's vascular around the periphery with necrosis centrally. So what are we thinking about? Lymphoma usually isn't vascular, though a lymphomatous mask can present somewhat like this, but vascularity is too much. Carcinoid tumors, it's a possibility, because I'm thinking here neuroendocrine tumor. Carcinoid is a thought, but the location posterior is a little bit atypical, but it's a thought. Just tumors can be vascular. Just come off the stomach most commonly, small bowel second. Could this be arising from the small bowel? I guess I couldn't exclude it on these two images, but it's less likely. The best diagnosis is that of a neuroendocrine tumor, well-defined mass. It's not in the bowel. It's not in the pancreas. This was a paraganglioma, and it's also a good location for a paraganglioma. Regarding the abdominal aorta in this post-trauma patient, the best diagnosis is? If you look at the images carefully, looking at the axial, it looks like there's a clot in the aorta. When you look at it on the MIP coronal, it looks weird, right? It looks like there's a step-off. Is that artifact? Maybe it's simply artifact that there was motion, but if you look at the rest of the image, there is no motion. What is going on in the aorta there? So it's not motion-related artifact. We agreed to that. Could it be a dissection? There's a flap there. It looks like a dissection. Is it a clot in the aorta? It kind of looks like a clot. What this is, the best answer would be, this is an aortic transection post-MVA from a seatbelt injury. You can see the location. It's right by the umbilicus, sort of in level. And what you had here was a transection. This patient was very lucky because the aorta is intact. You don't see massive bleeding. Patient eventually was stented. But a really nice example of an aortic transection in a very lucky patient. In this patient with IV drug abuse, the most likely diagnosis is, well, what isn't it? I, there is a lot of swelling in the left inguinal region. I don't see the veins well. I can't exclude a DVT, but I don't see one. It could be a focal abscess. I think it is. There's local inflammation present. Mycotic aneurysm is always a consideration with drug abuse. But when you look carefully, particularly at the MIP3D, there's a little connection to the vessel, 
by a one centimeter pseudoaneurysm. There's local inflammation present because the patient's an IV drug abuser and probably injected into the vein in this region. And this is a beautiful example of a pseudoaneurysm. IV drug abuse, all sorts of complications from DVT to pseudoaneurysms to abscesses to adenopathy. So it's not an uncommon finding for us. In this patient, the most likely diagnosis is, well, we look quickly and there's a cystic mass to the right of midline that goes down to the diaphragm and goes all the way up to the anterior mediastinum. What could it be? Well, it's water density, it's not an abscess, so let's get rid of that. You can have cystic Hodgkin's disease, but it's not typically purely a cyst, and there's no other findings present. It could be a bronchogenic cyst, because bronchogenic cysts can be large, though it is pretty large where it's going up. It could be a pericardial cyst, the most common on the right side. Well, I did think about a pericardial cyst versus a bronchogenic cyst, to be honest. This was resected. The patient had some mild symptoms, but it was so large, this was a thymic cyst. We do see thymic tumors. Thymomas is the thing we typically think about. Thymic cysts is another thing, but they're usually small. Anterior mediastinum do not project all the way down here. So just a terrific example of a thymic cyst. Well, those were 10 terrific cases. I hope you learned something. I think they were challenging. It made you think a lot. It made me think a lot. And with that, I wish you all a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.